are alleging the judge and and Judge Seraphim, although he was really hard on the gay bars, like he was he did have some corruptness in him. Yeah. So it wouldn't be out of the question for him to do it. But it's like is it really tipping the case by not giving the prosecution time to get the Rockford guy in? They had seven months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, if you can't show up on that day, like, it's not like they really, like, didn't have the time to notify him or anything. So, yeah. So, this whole this whole thing comes to nothing. It gets dropped in the trial. Like, I don't even know that any of these things are claimed are true. Um, but they walk free of it. Uh, and soon after this, Joey Nair, uh leaves Frank Balistrieri's employment and opens up his own place called Joe's Spaghetti House, um, along with Walter Broca, uh, who was another Frank Balistrieri uh, employee. But uh, Joe's Spaghetti House is a whole other story. But yes, yeah, so like I said, this episode's super short, but it's basically I'm using this really, really dumb trial to introduce Joe into the... And so now is Joe going to become, in future episodes, will Joe become blatantly, obviously, very much in the depths of the mafia? Or does he kind of always skirt on the outsides like this, where he knows the people he's hanging out with them, but he's never really involved in anything big? Somewhere between the two. Somewhere, okay. So Joe does actually become a member of the mafia. He so, go, He does the whole ceremony thing, and he becomes a member. But I have no evidence of him ever doing anything major. No murders, no giant, you know, burglaries. Almost like he's more on the business side of the mafia than, right. than the, the violent side of the right. mafia. So, like, he gets in, but he's he's very low-key guy. <laughs> this is just a funny story because it's just like, like, what an odd thing to charge to bring against them. And I can't even believe... Based on the sounds of it, like I feel like it, we're missing something in what you have here. Mm -hmm. Because based on what they charged him with, I'm surprised it ever got to court. That they just didn't look at it and they throw it out. But I guess you that's, like you that's said the law. Yeah, I suppose you said that this is a statute in Milwaukee yeah. that you can't have girls sitting next to guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not they. It's a stupid thing to get charged with, but it is actually how the law was written. So it's not like they made up a a law to charge them with. Like it's on the books. I don't know. I'm I'm guessing it's probably not on the books anymore. But and it's also interesting to me because so what you we kind of describe there where they they sell a drink and the girl just hangs out with the guy. That's something you see overseas all the time. Oh, that's is why it? that's why I I could like envision what was happening is because i've seen it before and but you don't see that in the u.s so i wonder if there is still laws in place throughout the united states that just prevent you from being able to run that kind of business i don't which, know like i don't really see it so much in milwaukee but there's in chicago like history you see what's called b girls mm -hmm. and i don't know what the b stands for but they it's this really stupid scam where the girls in the bar go up to guys and they ask to buy, get a drink bot for them. Yes. And then the bartender is in on it. So the bartender gives her like a ginger ale or something. Right. So the guy's paying like premium liquor prices for a ginger ale. So the bar's making money because this guy's like, ooh, I'm going to buy nice drinks for this pretty girl. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's the extent of that scam. Like, I don't know where it goes. Like, again, it's not a prostitution thing. It's just a way for the bar to sell drinks that they're not really selling. Yeah. And, and the biggest thing I could see with it is, is that they could be like a step towards prostitution, mm -hmm. you know, because you start, these girls start hanging out with the guys just. Well, that's this, clearly in, what the guys think are yeah, happening. Yeah. In the drink. Yeah. But, but it could also go that way where the, you know, eventually the girls are like, well, you know, for such and such more, we could do more or whatever. Yeah. So, and maybe that's why they have laws against it. But it just, it seems when, when you talk about it, it seems moronic. Like, like I, you can't go in and buy a drink. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just, it doesn't make sense. But yeah. And, and you're right. Like maybe. Maybe, like, if I saw the actual, like, charges, mm -hmm. maybe somewhere in there, 
the guy is like, ooh, I'm going to buy our peppermint schnapps and we'll see where this goes. You know, maybe something like that. But that isn't like the law. The, the law isn't anything about that. The law is just the sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> like, so it's so dumb. Yeah, I, I would almost think that it would be really fascinating to research this law to see what made people pass this law. Because I, you got to think that when they pass a law, I have the philosophy that governments are extremely lazy. So they don't <laughs> pass a law because for no reason. Yeah. You know. They had a reason for it. I just would really love to understand what that reason was in this situation. It's a good question. I mean, if I were to take a guess, I'm thinking this might just be one of those like weird moral laws where they're like, oh, it's a bar, so there's drinking. We don't want men and women sitting next to each other if they're not already together. Mm -hmm. It might be something really dumb like that. I don't know, Um, but... But, I mean, keep in mind, for a very, very long time, women weren't allowed in bars at all. Yeah. So. And, and that could be the number one thing for it is is that whenever you're not allowed to do something and they start letting you do it, they baby step it. Yeah. You know, they always put a ton of restrictions on you when you first do it. And then eventually it just becomes, you know, it just becomes a date normal thing that nobody cares about. Yeah. So that's probably actually a very good It's a good point. question, though. Like, it would be curious to see what the actual, like, who passed this, this law? Or, and for what rationality did they pass? Yeah, because some of these, some of the bar ordinances are really, really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, well, that's everybody's little meet Joe and Nea, or however we should be yeah, saying his yeah, name. Yeah, like I and, said, this was just, this was a thing that came up, and originally I thought about making it, a, a Patreon episode because it's so dumb and pointless. But I was like, no, nah, I can't do it because I, I this is a character that I I can't I can't bury behind the paywall because people are going to want to know who this guy <laughs> is. Yeah. So because his name is definitely going to come up and he's yeah. probably going to play a significant role in some stories or at least a significant enough role that you know yeah to just have his name pop up it wouldn't make sense. So right, right, yeah. So. Cool. All right. Well, with that, we can wrap this episode up. As always, we do have a Patreon. Check that out at patreon.com slash Milwaukee Mafia, or just jump over to MilwaukeeMafia.com and you can find a link on the page to get to it from there. And Gavin, where can people reach out to you at? They can email MilwaukeeMafia at gmail.com. They can check out MilwaukeeMafia.com or GavinSchmidt.com. Um, I've just recently done some big dumps on uh, on the website. Um, as people, long-time listeners probably know, other people w- don't know and will be shocked to hear, I, I don't have internet at my house. <laughs> um, and, and He's so, a podcaster without any internet. <laughs> yeah, so I don't update the websites as much as I should. But I but I recently went and I put, like, I really cleared off my, my hard drive and dumped it all on there. So... Um, the websites are more updated now than they've been in a long time. So definitely so, check them out. Yeah. So if you haven't been over there in a while, check out because it seems like lots and lots of new content to uh, yeah. to look through. And what is that? Like mostly like FBI files or just mostly notes that you've put? It's together? primarily podcast notes. But if people want to like search through the stuff that we talk about on here and, and get like the full version, like I'm pretty thorough on these episodes, but I'm still skimming a little bit. So if people want a more thorough story or they want to like cross reference it with other stories they told in the past that they've forgotten about the search feature on Milwaukee Mafia on both of them, but on Milwaukee Mafia.com is fantastic. I mean, you start typing in a word and the drop box comes down with everything that that word appears. in. so if you're looking up a specific name, It'll show you every episode that that name appeared in. It's a really, really darn good website. So whoever made that website, you did a great job. Good job. It wasn't me. So It wasn't me either. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. With that, we'll wrap this one up. And, and also, you should jump just jump over to that Milwaukee Mafia and check out Gavin's books because there are a lot of books that Gavin writes – Books on a pretty diverse selection of topics, I yeah, would say. Yeah, that's fair. And so you might find something on there that, you know, we don't talk about it a lot on this podcast, but might be of interest to you. So Jeff, definitely check that out as well. Yeah, if you want to do that, I mean, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin doesn't care, but, I don't, <laughs> but, I don't but if care. you want I li- to do it. I like when the royalty checks come in, but I don't, but I don't push it. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we'll see everybody next week for Patreon. 
And in two weeks with a regular mafia, mafia, mafia episode. Yeah. Thanks everybody for tuning in. <laughs>